This is part one of the FBI interview with Letitia Stoke. In my commentary, I will not repeat what the FBI agent has told the court. He can speak for himself. Watch Letitia's body language during this. It's markedly different from what we've seen before. FBI, Mr. General, Do you know why you're here? Did they inform you, the officers, of why you're under arrest? I'm under arrest? Yes. For what? For uh, gannon stops. Uh, warrant was issued out of Colorado. Okay, but no, someone could have just called me. A big thing now would have yeah, and apologize for that. Um, because of the nature of the warrant, it being a murder warrant, there's, there's, and that's what I'd like to talk with you about today. That's why we're not having a past of thousands here and whatever, is we would like to get to the bottom of what happened there. Um, I know that a lot of things have gone on with your life, a little bit of how this turns out. Okay, but because you were arrested and you're not free to leave, I need you to explain and advise the rights before we can talk. Well, I mean, so I'm getting charged with what now? Well, you were charged in a uh, uh, judge in Colorado Springs signed mm -hmm. off. So the way this case worked mm -hmm. was El Paso County got the first, the original case. They didn't have enough manpower to work it. Okay. So they called the FBI. Right. Uh, part of the, for the, for the FBI, um, an extension of the profiling unit, mm -hmm. and I came in and assisted and I've been helping for about the last three weeks. Okay. So our evidence response team, you've probably seen that on the news, we've been doing some searches, et cetera, and then other FBI agents have been writing warrants. Okay. So a lot of warrants have been written, we've gone through the court, El Paso Sheriff's Office and FBI have worked together, okay. and we found enough, you call it probable cause, okay. for a warrant to be issued. So that's why you're here today. Okay, a warrant for what, though? It was for the murder. What murdered? Gannon, Gannon Stout. So Gannon is murdered. Notice she acts like she doesn't know she's under arrest. Come on. And look at her body language. Everything's closed. She looks right at him. He's a threat to her. She says, what murder? Like she doesn't know. This playing dumb is a game. It's a game and she'll do it again. When she says Gannon was murdered, she's flat, she's rocking, she is seriously stressed. She's rubbing her hands on her knees. That's what the evidence shows. Okay. And I'm happy to share with you evidence, but we can't have a conversation unless you're advised of your rights. Okay, what am I right? Watch how much she touches herself and guards herself. So this is an advice of rights form. I'll fill it out at the top. And you don't have to answer any question. Oh, okay, so I'm not going to force you to answer anything. If you want this interview to be done, it's done. So we are in September. I'd like you to initial these as we go through them. Uh, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. You have the right to talk to a lawyer for advice before we ask you any questions. You have the right to have a lawyer with you during questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you before questioning if you wish. And if you decide to answer questions to a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. I'm not going to force you to say anything. Okay, so I had already, like, had reached an attorney, but all the information. Well, it's, it's up to you. I'm not going to force you to say anything. I mean, if you don't I can talk to you, but, I mean, the, the last time I asked for an attorney talking to them, I wasn't allowed that after I asked. That's not how this is going to go. This would be yeah, a conversation. You have more integrity being FBI than she would do that. Got a family. This idea that she was mistreated by other officers is, again, playing the victim. Then she uses, she plays the compliment game, where she mentions integrity. She's playing into the FBI's values. This is what psychopaths do. They hook into what they believe your values are. She played this game with Al when she says, 
you're a smart guy. So now she's playing the game with this agent. To protect. Okay, so I'm not going to violate anyone. You don't mind doing that at all. Um, but you, at, at any point, I would like to call my attorney yes, if I ma'am. feel like. Is that okay? That is okay. Okay. So can I write that in somewhere? Or? Well, that's this one right here. If you decide to answer any questions from a lawyer present, you have the right to stop at any okay. time. So, and if you need food, water, whatever else, this is not, we're not going to have people with guns standing outside trying to intimidate you. I want this to be your statements okay. and our conversation. So, I was thinking of a lot of things to say to you today because I've been helping, I've been involved. I've unfortunately worked a lot of missing kids cases. That's why they called me to do this. Okay. A lot of time with Mark, who was the dad. Dylan, who actually was in Colorado Springs with mom, mm -hmm. went to go see dad. This was in November of 2012. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he disappeared. It's a lot like what happened here. What I think happened with Mark is, uh, mm -hmm. and Mark wouldn't let him go. Mm -hmm. And I think Mark got upset. I think Dylan did some things that irritated Mark. I think there was just a punch in the face right. sort of thing. Right. You know, things went downhill from there. Well, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying that's what happened with you. I can help you because what you're charging me with is not, or whoever, is not the case. Okay. Gannon is alive, okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. Gannon is alive, and I can help you. Well, holy crap, man. Spill it. But no, no. Remember, nothing is for free. We know now she was lying. But even if it was true that he was alive, how wicked is this to leave the child out there Unless she gets what she wants. Gannon okay. is alive, okay, and I can help you. Okay, great. But see, here's the problem. When I reached out to people about getting help, I said, hey, I need someone who's going to help me to help you guys. I couldn't get that from me. In a calm tone, she says, hey, I didn't get what I wanted, so nobody gets Gannon. And it's not my fault. It's everybody else's fault. You didn't give me what I wanted. Her vocal delivery is smooth, her heart curled, and she even gestures with her hands in such a heartfelt way. At all. We are happy to help you. Okay, so I understand you might say you have, like, whatever evidence that you might say you have, but that is not a case. It did not hurt my child, okay? Whatever evidence. What she's saying is she's dismissing their evidence, and it's back to the game of, well, don't believe your senses. Don't believe what anyone else tells you. She's told this to Elle. Don't believe what's in front of your own eyes. Only believe me. She says, I did not hurt my child. That's correct. She didn't hurt Harley. She killed Gannon. Need more assistance besides the FBI. You're probably going to need some DA. Probably need a lot, a lot of help. Okay. Well, I'm happy to get whatever. Help. Okay. How do you know? But I can't people? help you unless people are willing to help me. And I did offer every opportunity to sit down and talk with not only my husband but with Landon to try to come up with the best plan to do. I really did, and I've been begging every single day. Please, 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 don't think this. You, I know you're an expert in your field. She says she's been offering opportunities to talk, but that's distorted. She talks only when she can control the conversation. She harassed Landon, tormented Elle, and the best thing to do was to tell the truth. But she's trying to charm the FBI agent. Okay. I know you may say you have whatever evidence you have, but it's just not true, okay? Not. It's not true that Gannon's dead? I'm 
I'm not going to sit here and say 100%. I can show you that there's really things that wouldn't have occurred that I can help you guys with to know that. And it leads back to some things just being in the wrong place at the wrong time. That's, that's the truth. Okay. That is the very truth. She speaks of being at the wrong place at the wrong time and says, that's the truth, the very truth. This emphasis tells us it's not. This is behavior designed to convince. And every day that went by, I had to do nothing but not only protect myself, but protect my family in this, protect other people in this. And it she says, I had to protect myself. Yes, that's true. She did. She is protecting herself from being caught and held accountable. The bit about I had to protect family and then she says other people in Colorado, that's her once again doing impression management. That's her once again being the hero and the martyr. It's just, that's just what it's in. I think our biggest problem is what happened at the house then. At, At the house? Yes. Well, there's nothing that would have happened at the house that has anything to do with what I, what I'm talking about at all. That has nothing to do with anything. She repeats his question. At the house? She knows darn well what's going on. She knows darn well what he's asking about. That repeating of the question is a delay tactic. It gives her time to think. She says there's nothing that happened at the house that has anything to do with what I'm going to talk about. This is actually true, because the truth of the matter, Gannon's murder, happened at the house, and she's not going to talk about that. She's misdirecting once again. Because you guys have, like, clearly put out this information about Gannon not coming home, and then this, and that, and the other. And I get, like I say, expert. People with friends expect experts. But it's just, you know, true. She says this, that, and the other. What is that? And then she says, but it's just not true. Here's the thing. It was Letitia who said Gannon didn't come home. And it wasn't true. He never left. And she has already admitted that. That's included in a previous video where she admits he never left. I will put the link in the description. It's not true. And until I know that I, I got to get help from some people, other than someone just having me in a room. You got to get help to do that. I got to get help to give everyone what they need because I'm going to need my mom protected. And I'm going to need my brother and sister protected. And most importantly, I'm going to need Harley protected. And on that same note, I'm also going to need other people in Colorado protected. And the people say FBI can offer that protection. I can. How? How? If it, involves so that, an 11 so year, means, if it involves finding an 11-year-old, then we can. And it means that we can have new identities? It does. I've had to do that before. We call it an informant, but we can do it for... We can do it for the Who else would you trust? I don't know. Wait, sir. I don't know. Again, she's being very transactional. Until I know, I gotta get help. She seems a little bit shocked when she realizes the FBI can offer protection and he actually comes out with it. She wants a deal of some sort, but I guarantee you that no deal would be good enough. And instead of jumping at that deal, she goes on. There's nothing that happened at any house, nothing that happened at any house that would have hurt, harmed, murdered done anything to anyone. Nothing happened at any house that would have hurt or murdered or or harmed anyone. Look, it's unusual for them to come out and use the word murder because they usually try and soften or distance. So this seems unusual until you consider the fact that she says murdered anyone. The anyone is the depersonalization and the distancing. Anyone is non-specific, even abstract. Okay, wrong place. 
wrong time. You were in the wrong place or Gannon was? I was. What about Gannon? I was. Well, all of the horrible events happened to Gannon. She can't focus on Gannon, even when it would help her. We, we all were in the wrong place. My, even my family was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Even Raina, even Harley. Okay? But all of us in the wrong place at the wrong time. And so, I swear to you on that. So. I swear. Again. Behavior designed or words designed to convince. But I got it. Just like you have trust issues, let me tell you where I am. Mm -hmm. So, when, with the FBI, where when a child goes missing, if they're under age, right. then we can get involved and it's, it can be even a kidnapping. So, if, if Gannon has moved from one point to another without right. his you know, will, then it's a child kidnapping. Right. And so, that's what we're working with as. And with me as a federal employee, Mm -hmm. uh, with me working a federal case. Because right now it's filed with the district attorney, right. but the U.S. attorney can file it as well. Okay. Does that make sense? What do you mean? The U.S. Everybody attorney is the federal okay. uh, prosecutors. Gotcha. Right now it's on the state. When you're talking to me, uh, we are recording this for your integrity and mine, right. but if you'd rather not say something, I mean, if I would rather you just say I don't want to answer it instead of telling me something that's not true. Okay. Because there's something called false statements, which is a thousand, it's U.S. Code 1001, to where if you lie to us during an investigation, that can right. be a year of prison time. Right. Okay. So that's why I said on this last one, if you want to not answer a question, I'm not going to push you. Okay. Okay. So but with these people, you know, taking Gannon or whatever else, if it's not true, just say I'd rather not answer that. Okay. Because we're different than your local detectives and whatever else. It's not a felony to lie to them. Okay. Okay, so he informs her that it's illegal to lie to the FBI, and he even gives her a strategy to get out of answering questions. This is a great gift. Remember this. My goal, though, is to find Gannon. Right. And if you need protection, if there truly is someone out there, okay. we can provide that. Does not happen though. I will need you to explain what happened from that night. Which night? The night that he disappeared. She says, "Which night?" My first reaction to this was, "Are you kidding me?" But then I remembered, even though one story was that Gannon went missing in the evening, he didn't. She killed him in the afternoon. There was the night before the fire which I still think was an attempt on Gannon's life. So when you remember those things, her asking which night might make sense. You mean like talking to him? Oh, okay, so let me just let me just explain that to you. And you might think that's like super, like... I'm not going to judge you here. Whatever. To him was, I, the reason I already knew someone was listening. Mm -hmm. But because of him not... Ever, like being like supportive and I tried originally to talk to him when he first got there that was the only reason I said this thing to him which just because I was out of anger and out of like her and not being able to have like support it was nothing to do with like like I'm sitting here going to tell you these that was just anger stupidity and because Al wasn't supporting her the way she wanted and again it's never going to be enough she told a big lie, I think this one was the Quincy Brown lie, out of anger. She lied about his son because he wasn't supportive enough. And I already knew, like, I even, if you heard it, you heard me say a lot of times, I know people are listening because I know the same time that someone called every time I could hear people. Right. I knew that. So me saying those things to him was just being just, what is the word you want to call it? Selfish or vacation, or whatever you want to call it. Just because that was, I was, I was hurt by him not wanting to work together to figure this out. Because I did have like originally initial different thoughts on certain things, and that was me trying to like, like basically read him and try to figure the situation out. So I understand that you may have heard those or whatever you may have heard, and that's okay because that totally was not. It, that was not me trying to be. Right. That was just the end. To him to I have a angry. question. She admits that she was selfish, but her tone and body language 
says it's no big deal. In regards to that, do, were you of sound mind? I mean, what, did you have, are, are you undergoing any treatment for anxiety or any depression or anything like that right now? Or? I mean, like, in the, like, I don't, I mean, I've had anxiety since I was, like, 16, 17, okay. but, like, as far as, like, um, undergoing, like, any kind of special treatment, you know, like, sometimes I might have to take, like, a little rest. Right. But, um, I didn't see, like, counselors or like, anything for any kind of, like, depression. And then, plus, too, like, right now, with the I mean, already gone medical records. I'm mark I'm eight weeks pregnant, so I can't do any kind of okay. like uh I, I mean I wish I could because then it would help a lot with anxiety. But. Now they're dealing with whether or not she's of sound mind. Remember her defense is insanity. So she says she does have anxiety and she takes lorazepam sometime. But there's no need for counselors. There's never been a need for counselors. This is really important. She claims she's eight weeks pregnant. I wonder if she thinks that will win her sympathy or get her out of jail somehow. And then plus two, like right now, with the I mean, already got medical records, I'm I'm eight weeks pregnant, so I can't do any kind of okay. like uh, I, I mean, I wish I could because then it would help a lot with anxiety, but right. I can't. Okay. But so I, you were of sound mind when you were talking to Al. You were just, you were upset with him and upset with the situation of him not being by your side through this whole thing. Right. And, but then at the same time, like, I have to sit back and think, you know, in a person's brain, you don't, you hear a hundred different things. You do get, do whatever. I just wanted him to know, because he knows, like, I've been, I've been taking care of our kids. Like for so long, why you? I'm not here to bash either one of them. I just they had a lot of different separate situations going on that I've always taken care of the kids, and so there's been times I've protected them from so many people. You know? We're back to being owed, being the hero and the martyr. At, like I've had to step in and protect them a lot, so many times. What kind of dad would you say, Al? Oh was to Gannon or is to Gannon. Oh, he's a good dad. Like, I mean, as far as, like, being, like, there for him and, like, you know, how can I say it? Like, if he says, hey, I want to go do something, Albert works a lot, so he's tired and his hours are, like, kind of, you know, up in the air here and there. But for the most part, he, like, is always trying to make sure he puts, you know, like, the kids, military first. Ah, so Al's a good dad. But, you know, he puts the military first. I bet if she could have murdered the military, she would have. And always will be, and that's the mindset. And then... Did you go into the marriage knowing that? Okay. The military well, was grew, first? Well, I grew up, like, knowing that my stepdad was here. Actually, that's why I was looking at that guy's name. But my stepdad was here. Um, so I lived on... Like, so, mm. like, I maybe didn't understand it from parent perspective, I mean, I'm sorry, thoughts for sake, for sake of, like, my mom's perspective, right. but I did understand it from, like, a child perspective, but the thing about it was, is Albert didn't have to, like, go be deployed or anything like that. It was mostly, like, work through the night type thing, so it was, like, we were blessed in that way of not having to mm-hmm. have to see him go overseas or, or something like that. Right. Note the use of the word blessed here. She's using a spiritual word as a tool. It's impression management. Some people try to use religion as a way to make you trust them. There's a saying that even the devil can quote scripture. And you came to the marriage of Carly. Right. And then the lamb is the youngest. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we had like... Maybe, I think four or five, one, two, like, kind of midterm, midterm, because we always try to, like, have kids, and I don't know, like, something must have happened, like, when I get to a certain point, like, what a bit, more kids. Right. But, but, yeah. Do you think I was faithful to you? Was he cheating on you? Um, 
I don't like I never we never had like any conversation until like of course Matt like recently. But like prior to that we never had like a uh, like buses or it might be something like I work type person. When he got work, he just liked to come home. He wasn't like, um, oh, I'm gonna go do this with people. He just wasn't. That was the part because he wasn't. You know, like not saying you can't. Like I'm sure you might say if a football game is going, you know, watch a different. Right. Usually, for the most part, we do it like do it together. She doesn't directly answer the question of whether or not Al cheated on her. Whether he did or didn't, there's no moral judgment here. It's important for investigators to have an understanding of everyone involved, including any potential third party, and to understand the dynamics in the household. She is trying to present a normal picture of a normal marriage. She needs people to see Elle loving her. Note what's missing. In other interviews, she tried to paint Al as an abuser. She's not doing that now. See, it doesn't fit with the picture she wants to present at this moment. Not only does she need Al's absolute affection, she needs other people to view her as being loved. Except, of course, if she thinks she can get herself out of trouble by saying something different. Do something in there, but it was never really like having our own people that we did things with. But we never like had issues of anything like that. Most of the time, the issues that we always had was I never wanted the kids to ever come back here a lot of times during like, their break and we begin. But he would always say, Well, I have to, I'm obligated. You don't think he was cheating on you prior to this whole thing going on again? Um, or did you subscribe to him? That Albert was cheating? Mm-hmm. No, they, I mean, there's been times in the past where I saw that he's talked to other women, you know, like on messages and things like that. But then he's also like, you got that by phone in the past. He would have saw that he's always apologized for, you know, like this thing. Here's that jealousy. Al has to apologize for talking to other women. I'm not sure if she's complaining about the kids being with them or Landon. She uses the word here, but she gestures away. In either case, disagreements around the kids were a source of conflict. Were you guys considering divorce or no? You and Albert? I didn't know anything about any kind of divorce. Like, I know, like, we've used the term loosely. Use the term divorce loosely? Oh. The subject of divorce did come up. This goes to motive. You know, because there was a lot of stress having to deal with um, like the situation with Landon. There was a lot of stress. Because, like, we fought so hard and so long to get kids mm-hmm. to, like, a safe, you know, uh, situation. So it was very hard to, like... You've read someone and they're so emotionally, like, upset about the kids not being with us and we not being able to protect them that it was kind of hard. It took a lot, you know, told throughout that time frame of, like, Alaska, I'm sure, yeah. time in Alaska. So during that time in Alaska, it was very hard to, to, like, have to see him be so upset from so many miles away. Mm-hmm. You know, we get called that kids didn't have a place to stay. We get called that they were in the back of their car and people were being arrested and you know, so that took its toll in the terms of like figuring we should not have to like go through these things but then once like we got to Colorado um you know we all could be in like one place and then it was like kind of at first it was like kind of hard because we, we've been you know like, back and forth to Alaska for so long because you know if you know the background I had the kids here for the school year, for, right. for Gannon and Lena. So it was Lena, was it first grade year? Again, fourth grade year? Yeah. So they would have went to school here. So I had them here with us then. Um, still with that, it was both, like the part going back and forth, traveling mm-hmm. on holidays, right. things like that. So that would have been the most. You know, just the time, like, so when I got, we got to Colorado, it was just like, okay, we're here. You know, we are together. We said stupid things to each other. Like, I don't know. 
But like the things that we could do to be like, okay, we'll forget all this, or if you do this, we'll do it and forget all this. Right. But it's stupid, really strong. Again, issues over Landon. Again, this goes to motive. Letitia saw herself as having to take care of Landon's kids. Well, it just thinks going through that because I uh, still deal with dads 14 years later mm-hmm. who are looking for their daughters right. at bus stops and malls and whatever. So. I think that's the hard part is like people are like, you know, being upset. And I'm like, I haven't had the opportunity to like even just sit down and be like, okay, look, well, this is. I've given my life to take care of these children. I, I have. Thanks for the You know, right. that, that I, I've done that. Mm-hmm. It's so hard because inside that, I don't get to express that emotion to have that, you know, to say to anyone, anything like that. And that's the most difficult part. No. Because I've had to just be like, how can I, how can I make the situation back, you know, like, let's be honest. Gannon is missing and people are upset. Of course they are. She says the hard part is that she doesn't get to express her emotions the way she wants and she's not getting the recognition and attention she wants. That's basically what she's saying. She gave up her life for those children, that other woman's children. She is owed. John, I mean... Like Albert was talking about, and again, whether you make mistakes or not. We literally woke up on Christmas. I always make it about the kids on Christmas because they don't get to spend Christmas with them. So, like, if they went home for holidays, you know, they might leave, you know, go week out. We might not see them until, you know, January. So, I I always spent my time trying to make sure every time, I didn't believe in certain holidays, I did Halloween, but to make sure every ho- every holiday was, like, revolved around the situation. So, for if you look at the situation, I went, you know, we have every house and cars and we have whatever. So I work my entire life in education, not a doctor. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's like. Doesn't everybody work hard to make the holidays good for their family? She starts to say that she makes sure everything revolves around the family. But she doesn't actually say that. She says revolves around the situation and the situation is that she worked her entire life and she's upset about her image all the things you're hearing have been consistent themes all along this is who she is she does not address where ganon is everything i work so hard for everything i work military or, you know, service and things like that. No matter how much we had did on that, it took us everything to get to right. and, and that was where we were at in our safe spot. So for a person who can you know, take care of everyone and do everything for everyone and then just cannot do it for a split second, that's the hardest part. Mm-hmm. You know, knowing that this is an image getting set on me, all these horrible things, all these things that are just not true. Well, that's what we'd like to get to today. And that's... But first, let's go to Gannon. Okay. Because what we do is called victimology. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that before? Mm-hmm. Sure. So, victimology is we find out as much as we can about Gannon, the victim. Okay. And even if he's safe somewhere, even if he's not, knowing more about him, especially since you were the last person with him, helps us to try to figure out like, say we don't have a suspect, somebody killed, but we have nothing. Okay. Then we will look at that person to see what drew that, that homicide that homicide there. Why did those two people interact at that time? Okay. And then we'll also do things like uh, it's, uh, the, the subject, the situation, and the location. So something happened. Dan is here. You have someone or something that did him harm, and then you have why the location. Okay. So we have those three things. And, you know, we've looked through your house and, you know, done the CFI stuff and looked at all that, you know, body fluids all over the house and garage and whatever else. So that's all been done. Um, I'm curious to see your challenges of Gannon uh, here when you had to be a parent and then there. Challenges 
but there's whatever else. What special attention did he need? What can you tell me about him? Well, here it was, he was younger, you know, um, it's starting to a little bit hitting towards, you know, like sixth grade. Uh -huh. So, like, here he was more so of, like, um, let's see. Not, like, at that time, the situation here, okay, so prior to that, we never got to see him at some, like, every other weekend for a long time. Okay. Right. All right, so then when um, Albert, we finally pay all the money and got or whatever. This is supposed to be about Gannon specifically. Notice she throws in, we finally pay all the money, whatever. She's broadcasting what's important to her, and it's not Gannon. She really resented this child. Um, Albert had to choose between getting out, getting out of, um, sorry, getting out of the military or the kids in a way, kind of, because mm -hmm. mom wasn't given any or whatever. Um, so then that's when we step in and say, we're going to keep them here in our home here and I'll stay here with them. And then, you know, we'll go from there. Right. Mom wasn't giving any whatever. And that's when we stepped in. Still about Letitia. Still about how everyone else falls short except Letitia. But in that time, he also didn't get to see his mom. Asia didn't have a place to live. She also um, she had had a baby, but then mainly to her, not to, I'm not going to trash her. I'm going to say she was married to someone who didn't take care. Of, mm -hmm. Wouldn't take care of them like they should okay. with her being pregnant in right. that situation. So with mom not having that foundation support, she wasn't able to come to the house a lot. And when she did come to the house, there's time she came that she was like, oh, you know, she just that wasn't in a good place. So I let her stay at her home, and Gannon had a tough time every time because, in his mind, he just wanted to be like a sister. You know? She says she's not going to trash Landon as she trashes Landon. It's still not about who Gannon is. Letitia's disdain just keeps pouring out of her. Mm -hmm. What? His you step sister? Yeah. You mean Harley? No. Oh, it's Landon's? Yeah. No, no I don't. Mia. Mia. Mike's yeah. starter. Yeah. You know, Mike, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he wanted it to be like Mike's starter, which was they go to um, the dad's house for a week. Right. You know, he said Got it. that was Gannon's mindset when he was here. Grandparents, amazing people, which is Landon's family. Um, amazing people, Grandma, I think I'm going Nana and Poppy. Great people. They would always come get them on weekend and things like that. So that I'd have time to like, you know, do whatever I needed to do or if I wanted to go shopping or go hang out with people, whatever. They're wonderful people because they helped Letitia. Whether someone is good or bad has nothing to do with who they are and everything to do with how they serve the narcissist or not. So we had all that, you know, going on here, the missing piece was, you know, I you know, yep. Um, Gannon would do his schoolwork, very smart. I think he made always here in fourth grade, I'm pretty sure he made always here. So made always here, didn't have like an issue at all. What was he like when he got home from school? Because Albert's out, you're having to take care of him. Well, to be honest with you, I got him from after school, which was about like five, five thirty ish. So by the time we did homework, um, and all those things, it was almost time to, like, get ready for bed. Are you doing his homework with him? Is he doing it right. on his own? What? See, the difference between school, and I'm not trying to talk about Colorado, if you're from Colorado. Yeah, the difference between Colorado and South Carolina schools, like, South Carolina did a lot more with history and, and those type of things for Colorado. So, it's not really so he had a, he did struggle with history, so we had to sit at the table a lot of times and, like, really work on, like, he's a mathematics. He, so, like, like his dad. Gannon is just like he said. He is so mathematically inclined, you know, like an engineer type brain. So when it came to like history and right. reading science stuff, unless it was something like he didn't like. So we spent hours sometimes, you know, working on those things. But with knowing the curriculum, it was easy for me because I already knew. And so by the time we did that, it was time for him to go to bed. You know, yada, yada, yada. I understand why someone might explain the afternoon or evening routine here, but the question was, 
what was Gannon like after school, not what did you do with him after school? That's here. So, yeah. And what about in Colorado? So, well, when we get to Colorado, of course, I start them in school, which would have been August. Okay. So I start them in school. It was a big help because Gannon is at this point a little bit more mature. He knows he stays with us. Because, see, I took him to Alaska and homeschooled him before we got to Colorado. I homeschooled him for those two months. And then we transitioned into Colorado. Actually, it wasn't August. I'm sorry. I told you the story. It was that January that we got here. Because I homeschooled in November, December. Not of this past time, but of the year before. Okay. Sorry. So January 2019. Yes. Yeah, so I homeschooled in 2018, November, um, Christmas time. Because mom couldn't get him in mm-hmm. uh, for whatever reason. She homeschooled him. Okay. But she just has to throw in. It was because Landon couldn't come and get him. Then we came on to, um, but I think she ended up getting them, and she flew them back to Colorado for a week or something. She got for a week, maybe. Flew them back to Colorado. So January 2019, we would have started school in Colorado. Okay. Great. So get them in the school, which Colorado, I mean, I think it was like May, middle May, they would go to Colorado. Yeah. So February, March, April. Okay. So it was pretty simple in the terms of we would do like, you know, uh, you never know, work. In Colorado, for some reason. Um, so it was always Albert would be like, make them write their labs or, you know, it's time for them to go to summer. What time did you normally get home from school? Well, around that time, he we went to another school because this new school wasn't built. Okay. So it would have been like 3 45, 4 o'clock, maybe just because it hadn't come from the cocktail. Mm-hmm. And then come in with the. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So they came back in August. So we went on. Danny went with us on a big cruise in the summer because he wanted to, he didn't want to go home. Right away, he wanted, we gave him a choice. You want to go on a family cruise or you want to go, you know, to, he said he wanted to go on a cruise. So that was a big family cruise. Then he came in and I forgot a couple of So it was right. just me, him, Harley, and Albert. So it was just the four of us. Right. Lena Dingo. So we all went on the family cruise and had a great time, whatever. And then, of course, they come here for the summer and then they get ready to come back for fall. So they come back for fall, and at this point in time, I was I was working. Albert was doing like one of the shifts, like three two. You had your teaching job, and yeah, three two three two. He was like, working and all these things. Okay. Well, um, Harley was working at the end, starting uh, Pike Peak College. So we were all pretty busy, like throughout the day, and then in the evening it was kind of like come in, grab this, grab this. But then I was coaching. So as I was what were you coaching? Softball. So as at, I was at your school? At the high school. At the high school. So as I was coaching softball, you know, um, I probably didn't get home sometimes till like five thirty, maybe sometimes later. Just mm-hmm. depending on if it was a game or practice or something like that. So honestly most of a lot of the help had to come from either Harley doing a lot of it, if Albert was working, or Gannon had to independently like, you know, do a lot of it himself. How did he get home? Which we were teaching. At this point in time, they were in the new school. Right. So the new school, because we lived 1.5 miles out, the new school allowed him to uh, take them. Okay. If not, they had the, the, the rest of the way they had him. Okay. Um, so um, coaching was over, you know, probably around, I think it's weird because they do stop all free. I mean, not free. So coaching was over maybe around, like, whatever. you know, he started having a hard time because he didn't want to go home for Thanksgiving. Or, you know, when I tell you again, he loves his Nana. Like, that's his, that's his. If he was up to him, he would just, he'll just, he'll be, he'll be at Nana's house yeah. all the time because he loves Nana. Um, so, he, like, wanted to go because he has two little boy cousins. If you know again, and four sisters, and he doesn't have any brothers. Mm-hmm. So, he, in his way, those two little boys are his, like, his brothers. Okay. So if he goes to Nana's house, you know, he can spend a lot of time with his little cousins. I think it's like and then they can all just hang out. He didn't get to go for things. He didn't out had to work. So we kind of, I don't really cook. It was always like eating out. It was never right. dinner. So I just said, hey, listen, you know, we'll go out to dinner. We did all this Thanksgiving. Tried to make it up the best that I could get because I'm not, I'm not his mom, but... I'm not his mom. Remember earlier she said 
I didn't kill my child. And I'm not his mom also means she's not really responsible. Like, he wanted to be there with, with the family, you know, because the holidays and that's what mm-hmm. they always used to. And then, of course, Christmas came around. And same thing kind of happened at Christmas, but then we worked it out and I we figured out a plan to get him home for Christmas. And then they were bananas for Christmas? Spend time with the family, yeah. Because okay. mom never had our, like, a house. house. So, Albert said it's okay if they go and then they have to get me out. Um, and that was our biggest worry. Like, um, have you ever been here before today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so like if you like look on the boulevard and things like that, there's a lot of like, like not the best places. And that was where they were staying at one point, you know, when they would come. And so that was why they were like, no. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then is Gannon responsible for taking his own he has ADHD medicine right. right does he do that on his own do you help him with that um most of the time like how this how it worked is I got all lunch boxes ready set them on we've been in the house with the stove that's in the corner by the refrigerator we would set the lunch boxes out snacks and let them pick can we use it? always take before Lena because he just knew that he could get it if he beat her up he could pick the snacks he wanted mm-hmm. you know so he would pick the snacks that he wanted and I would lay his if Albert wasn't getting them up, I would lay his ADHD medicine, his Vyvanse, 20 milligrams. I would lay his Vyvanse on the so counter. form? Is it just tablet? Or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I would lay it on the counter, yeah. and he would know, you know, come in and take it. How does he take it? Is it with water? Like, or yeah, yeah, yeah. He doesn't even use water half the time. Okay. He just, right. He's taking it since he was five. Okay. So. Is there any other that he's on, or no? Like uh, Adderall or anything? I, don't know, I don't know. I think when they were, when he was like five, they like tried a one medicine, but the Vyvanse worked. That was it. Like that was the, that was the one. Any of the other kids on medication? Mm-mm. Hardly. Or, Mm-mm. No. Mm-mm. Gannon was on one medication, and it wasn't hydrocodone. It was Vyvanse. The questions about medication were good here. Remember, they hadn't found Gannon's body yet and had no way of knowing that hydrocodone and not Vyvanse was found in Gannon's system. What about you or Al? You... I don't know anything. Other than when I told you yeah. about uh-huh. um, Lorazepam, but see, the thing about Lorazepam was they might give it to me and I might not get it again. I mean, 30 tablets, but it was only for, like, panic attacks or things like that. As far as Albert, I know he has the gout, so I know he... Right. I'm sure it's nothing that But nothing that he could, uh, again, could mix up medications with or whatever. And, uh, if I somebody else was mad or anything. Not, not that I'm worried. Now, there's stuff in the counter from, like, probably old stuff. Or, like, you know, like, uh, Harley had her wisdom teeth taken out. I think Albert did, but I'm pretty sure he might have been smart to get rid of that stuff. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but none of us had, like, any, like, a... Notice what she did not disclose here. She didn't disclose that there was hydrocodone in the house. She says there were old medications in the cupboard, and she illustrates as if the cupboard was high. She was asked two separate questions about it. One was, was Albert on any medications? And the other was, were there any other medications in the house? She discloses the ones in the cupboard but not Albert's hydrocodone in the bedroom. I'm asking you that because of the bath salt deal that he came up with. You know, that was on the hike day, wasn't okay, it? Okay, so the bath salt thing was just totally because they did this drug class, which is the same class that my sister did too. And it's where these people came in and they dressed up in like, a, they, I say dress, they were professionals. They are medical professionals. They dressed in their outfits and all those things. And they let the kids, like, um, pretend they were working on, uh, what do they call it? You know, like, as if they were in CPR and all that. Uh-huh. And yeah. during that time frame, they went over all these different drugs. So they talked about what it, what your life is on crack. They talked about, like, all these. Like, it was very, very, like, in-depth for fifth grade. But at the same time, you guys think it was probably a good thing to... to well, again, I'm telling you about this. Or did you find out from a teacher or... How did you find out they had this in-depth conversation? Well, I knew because they did it at our school first. 
So they did it. Art, they did art school first. So it was something once they found out they did art school and they saw like all the cool pictures and they know that other well, teachers wanted to know about it. So when other teachers want to know about it, they you know went around different schools and they find like I think Albert signed a permission slip or maybe sent an email to the teacher or whatever that it was okay for him. to So it was Dan fascinated with the basalt thing or how? What, how did that conversation happen? Because I know that seemed to be important, you know, during the hike and afterwards and whatever. Well, he was like, okay, so my apparently would deliver these packages. And we never knew what they were. They were told meat, they were told whatever. We don't know. But Albert would always talk to um, Gannon about anytime people had anything like drugs and, and things of that sort. He would always say, like, these are bad people. Think like this. This is bad thing. So right. Dan already had like some sort of uh, base foundation, mm -hmm. um, you know. And because he had like a, like that sort of base foundation, he always had like uh, questions because like right. that. And that was that was that was always the thing. Cause, like, is that he was born? His baby knows I'm gonna be. And that was like his main concern was wanting to know these things because he he was just curious of how like all she's really struggling with this explanation. Her cadence, volume, and fluency are all off here, and she's uncomfortable. Interesting. I don't have any conclusion here, but maybe you do. But were you guys on the hike when he brought it up, or where were you? He had already brought it up prior to the hike. Okay. He had already said something when he came home after the. Was it a concern for you? Tell me what he said and how your conversation. I don't went. honestly, sir. I don't remember. There is something here. She's scratching her head and grabbing her wrist. Her pitch goes up, and she abruptly ends it. She calls him sir and says, "I don't remember." I just remember he was telling us about the different things that they were talking about. She gets pretty stern here in her tone, letting him know it's a sore spot. Her legs have been crossed since the beginning of the interview, but she doesn't cross her legs in the earlier interviews. So from the start here, we know she's afraid of this guy. Here, she's hunching her shoulders forward, has her arms crossed, then gives him that sharp gesture with her hand held out in front of her. Now they're talking about both the bath salt and the hike. I've already told you, I suspected she was contemplating killing him on the hike. There's something here. Tell me what it is. And then I was like, oh, did you guys do this? And they'd be like, yeah, no, what did you do? So it kind of like mimicked the same way. Mm -hmm. So we did talk about that a lot. Was that before hike, you said? Yeah, we up to it before the hike. There was a lot of talk about it, you know, for a little bit. And then, of course, um, the hike, I think he said a few things. What did he say? I just, I just remember he was talking to me. And was it concerning to you? Like what he was saying? Like he really wanted to try these things? Or what? Like, I didn't think anything about him wanting to try any of it, do anything with it. Um, I know that he said something about it, and I gave him a bath ball. When he said um, something, what did he say? He just asked me about, in general, about if we had bath ball. Because, to be honest with you, he had already pooped how many times. So now she's changed it to bath bombs. Hmm. When she redirects, you got to be suspicious. So he said that after he pooped on the hike? He pooped a couple of times on the hike. Yeah. Like, honestly, too, I don't mean like... Just a little bit to where right, it's right, right. And right. And so if the whole thing about that folks was just I think you just wanted to like relax. Because it took two you end up taking two baths. Gannon took two baths? So now, do you wanted to I don't want to be weird, but are you giving him baths? Is he taking them? No, no, no. Gannon goes by himself and he's very like helpful, independent. Like I've taught him so many independent skills. She can't even compliment Gannon without injecting herself. I taught him so many independent skills. Where he can go in there and just 
now. So if we're getting to like bring his clothes up or right. you know, simple things like that. But okay. So he he takes two baths that night or one bath that night, one the next morning or I think when we got home we took one. Me and Lena went to go get food. And then I think he had to use the bathroom again. I think when me and Lena got back, and then she took one somehow. Here, she left Gannon alone in the bath while she and Lena went out. Had she drugged him yet? Yes. So what did an argument look like with Gannon? Have you guys ever argued? Um, like, maybe like in Rural Beach. You know, uh, we would have been like, we had, our, we're so much alike. So we are so much alike in terms of we both have stomach problems. Really, really bad. Um, we both have like uh, anxiety, so, like, so to speak, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he's so like, he's so like kind and, and like uh, kind hearted. To, and then the point of like, we can get upset about something, but then the next minute he'll be like, I am. So we're like, oh. Look about something. We'll just say something. Or he had tremendously increased the amount in Myrtle Beach. I don't think I ever heard him do. I love you, or like you know, like I mean, like the holiday might come. You know, they just say oh, I'll write something, whatever. But like since having him all the time, it became more of like I I would hear I love you. Like, all the time. She says she and Gannon are so alike, and he's so kind. She talks about Gannon saying he loves her. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if she made him say it, but three things jump out at me. It's about her. She needs people to see her as lovable and loved. And she murdered this innocent boy.